Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Well, good morning. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. Uh, I'm going to be your host today. I'm Stan Kirkland. Uh, Winston is out of town. He uh, will be back, uh, I, I believe, uh, tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the weather today is brought to us by Haney uh, Technical Center. The high today is uh, 92 degrees. Uh, low is 74. Uh, the real field temperature today is like 100 degrees. It is going to be a scorcher. So, uh, uh, you know, stay hydrated if you're outside. Uh, Water temperature is about 87 degrees. Water still warm, uh, very warm uh, for this time of year. Uh, river readings today, uh, Apalachicola River at Bluntstown is about two and a half feet. It's going to be dropping over the next couple of days. Not the best conditions for uh, fishing in the river, but it is what it is. Uh, the Choctahatchee River, Careville measures about one, one foot and, um, and it's steady. Uh, the tides are brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Uh, funeral home, uh, Panama City, uh, high tide today is at 8.57 a.m. Uh, the low t tonight is at uh, 6.25 p.m. That's about a 1.6 foot tide change. That's what you want if you like, particularly if you like to fish uh, in our local bays. Uh, the uh, 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 tides at St. Joe, high tide is at 10.03 uh, a.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's a high tide. The low tide is uh, this, uh, this evening at 7.41 p.m. Eastern Time. It's only about an eight-tenths of a foot tide change. Not a lot of tide change, but uh, the, the, it is, it is, uh, uh, there is some, some uh, tidal movement. Uh, the marine forecast, uh, the winds are east, northeast, uh, about seven miles an hour uh, in the morning. It's probably going to get out of the uh, south. Uh, with the influence of the coast uh, this afternoon. There's about a 10% chance of rain. And as I said, it's going to be sunny and hot, so stay hydrated. Uh, and let's take our first break now. Well, welcome back to Panhandle Outdoors. Uh, along with me this morning is Ken Paramore. Good morning. Uh, you know. Good morning. Welcome to you. Glad to be back. Yep, Ken, uh, all of you know Ken. Ken's retired uh, law enforcement captain with uh, uh, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. And I guess prior to that, you worked with uh, the Game and Freshwater Fish Commission. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh -huh. 30, 35 years total. And Ken and I, when uh, we were both working with FWC, had a chance to work together. And uh, my relationship with Ken was always good. Uh, and. Uh, Nothing, uh, n nothing else, but but good. Still going strong. You are. We're still going oh, yeah. strong. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> yep, I agree with you. It, and it's really been uh, Ken and I both were asked to serve as uh, on the uh, uh, committee with the the local uh, chapter of the National Wild Turkey Federation, and we've both obviously been retired and took that on. And we just you just had uh, our banquet. You're our chapter president, and we just had our banquet. Uh, fun we had our banquet. It was our fifth annual. Right. It was uh, on the heels of this disaster that we've yeah. had here in this county and surrounding areas. Um, and it ended up being the best banquet that we've ever done. So kudos and thanks to everybody who helped make this, uh, this banquet be a success. And, and we're looking for another good five strong years. I'll tell you, I, I was wondering, you know, with uh, Ken, with everything that had happened, whether we were going to be able to pull this off because, you know, people just have been through a lot. But you're, you're exactly right. But you know, an example of that was people were ready, already to get back to normal, too. Yeah. And uh, this thing had everybody down for eight, nine, you know, months. And it was time for a change. And there, there were some other banquets. Uh, that were held locally that were canceled, and then there were a couple that were held. And we made the decision because we were able to have our venue to move forward. And you know, like we talked about, we didn't care if we had ten people or uh, you know, hundred or two hundred people. Right. We just wanted to keep going and uh, not let it go. 
and then having to start all over the following year. Well, so. it was impressive. Uh, I will say this, the number of sponsors that stepped up and said that, you know, they wanted to contribute and be a part of it. And I think you have... We had 25 sponsors. Uh, that's amazing. And, yeah. um, and they bought tables and mm -hmm. and they're anywhere from... Sponsor memberships, yep, tables. Six, um, eight, or even 10 people to the table uh, that were there. Yeah, we had, we guessed we paid for 250 meals. So we had probably between 230 and 250 people, which is, is more than we've had in the past. Um, we raised more money than we have we have in the past, and uh, our net to, to gross ratio came in at 68%, meaning um, after we paid expenses, which right. is the venue, meals, the auction packages, the auctioneer, right. all that, um, we ended up earning about $32,000 net that goes back into uh, the ground. And we don't keep any of that money in the local chapter. That money we're passed through and that money goes to the National Wild Turkey Federation for uh, all kinds of work as relates to wild turkey <clears throat> management uh, in Florida. And, and what, some of the things, what off the top of your head, I know I'm catching you cold, but what are some of the things they do here in the state of Florida for wild turkey I've management? Got a, I've got a whole list. Um, there's 30 37 projects last year with last year's money. The banquets around the state generated almost $500,000. And the FWC and the Florida Forest Service matches. Some, right. In some cases, it's 24 to 1. Right. So we ended up sticking a couple million dollars back last year. And this year's money is the same way. So. But it's things like control yeah, burning, roller uh, chopping. Um, yep. Op, you know, wildlife openings, uh, and they're done throughout the public lands, wildlife management areas throughout the state. And they can't do it on private property. That's one question no. people ask us is, why no. can't uh, m me as a private property owner, why can't I apply for some of this money? And the reason is, is because you may benefit wild turkeys on your property, but you also can tell the public to stay off your property. And so that's why uh, and I'm boiling it down. But now that, we do have we do have private lands biologists who will consult and right. as assist and provide assistance, but uh, the funds generated through banquets and youth hunts and all these other things it goes all back to public land. And it's impressive though. I, this is our fifth year on the hills of Hurricane Michael, and uh, people stepped up in a big way. And we can't thank enough that the people who attended, the sponsors, and I'll tell you, uh, first, Panama City First United Methodist Church, y'all y'all did a great job in hosting us. Uh, the food was, uh, Jim Fulton was the primary cook, everything was great. So uh, anyway, uh, good stuff. Uh, let's take our next break right now and we'll be back with you in just a moment. Well, thanks for being back with us on uh, this edition of Panhandle Outdoors. And as I said earlier, uh, the coach will be back, uh, should be back tomorrow uh, with you here in the studio. Uh, Ken. Uh, he, he keeps the fossil fuel industry in, in, he does. Bu in business. He does. <laughs> he and Gail are on the road. Oh, uh, my They goodness. are. Yeah, I called him the other day and I got him at the... Uh, I said uh, I had some business stuff talk with him, and he was at the Cape, so he was. Yeah, uh, yep. he, he, I don't think he lets dust settle on him. No, nope. no, nope, not not at all. Uh, Ken, how did your uh, snapper season go? Uh, uh, our snapper season uh, is history now, and we'll talk about something else. Yeah, in a minute, we. But. You know, we had about a month recreationally, right. maybe five weeks. I don't remember exactly. We had weather. You know, it blew uh, a it, gale yeah. during it. I, I managed three trips and got a few fish, you know, but um, it, it's so hard when you have those weather days that, that cuts into your uh, your time. It sounds like, okay, we gave them a month, but not everybody can go at the same time, and when you can go, it's dependent on weather, especially if you're in a small vessel. Um, it was okay. I'm not complaining about the, the dates, but the weather didn't cooperate, and, and yeah. um, I, I only managed about three trips and did okay. but. Uh, I, I did hear Alabama just approved uh, a three-day October fall uh, fishery, fish. Is that right? Um, Good. And I heard through the grapevine that Florida may discuss having some kind of fall season. It, it'll be limited if it is. Um, 
three days or a weekend really is th well, then you're just jamming everybody you know on the water at the same wow. time but we'll see you know it fall well, fishing is fun and it's good and there's less pressure obviously but there's you know you if you pack them all into a weekend, it's <laughs> chaos. I, I didn't know that Alabama had done that. I was hoping that, uh, I, I'm still hoping that Florida has a longer fall season, maybe weekend, but I don't know what the commissioners will do and I don't know what kind of pushback they're gonna get from. Uh, we had a fall season probably 10 years ago now and uh, it was really nice, to, you know, it's not as hot. Well, didn't um, last year we have a, a number of weekend Saturday, Sunday weekends, or am I? I don't remember. I don't. Yeah, and, I, I, and I maybe my so. memory's fuzzy. Maybe, maybe we didn't. But I was thinking we had a few weekends where you could go. But uh, anyway, uh, scallop season is in now. The scallop season will go through, I believe, this Saturday, the fifteenth. So, mm -hmm. if you uh, have you had a chance to go scalloping? I didn't get a chance to go. I, well, I say I didn't get a chance. I didn't make a chance to go. Um, I haven't been. I haven't been uh, either. From what I heard, it was very crowded. There was very limited or no no parking at the boat ramps, which I would have avoided the weekends anyway. But right. I just didn't want to go through the effort, I guess you could say. And and uh, I didn't make it. But from the reports I've seen, the people I've talked to. It's been a banner season. And yeah, from what I understand, they've had a, a banner year. Everybody's finding scallops. Uh, so uh, if you get a chance, go before the season closes uh, on the uh, 15th. You know, it's, it's hard to understand how from storm recovery and then the year before was red tide and what the year before there was no, there was no scalloping, I think it was, if I'm right. And then to go from nothing Right. To having a banner year is it's it's crazy, but it looks like Mother Nature knows how to take care of itself. And you know, one thing that FWC does, and and it sounds like I'm being a shill for them, and I'm not. But one thing they do that really is is helpful is before the season they go to all these places that are popular spots, Steen Hatchie, Ch uh, uh, Saint Joe Bay, and other places where places that are open and they do their transects and they they basically put down a, a rope and then they swim that transect and they tell you how many scallops are now they're smaller this is done a month before the opening uh, or, or or six weeks before the opening but they swim that transect and then they 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 tell you how many that they see and it's a great indicator of what kind of season you're going to have and of course all the Chamber of Commerce people are hoping they can come back and say, we saw a zillion scallops because that means more people coming into the area. But it is what it is. So, uh, but this year they, they said they saw a lot of scallops and, and, it, and, it, and it turned out that way. Uh, dove season's coming up. Uh, I don't know if you're a dove hunter, but uh, dove season's coming up. In fact, we got a number of hunting seasons and a lot of hunting, hunting info that's coming up. Dove season's coming up. Uh, I believe it starts on the uh, 28th. It's a little earlier it's early. than it used to be. Early. Yeah, the bag limit's been increased. Uh, I know uh, 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 Travis ba Officer Travis Bassford is a guest of Winston's, and he talks about some of this stuff, and I'm not going to go into detail on it, but uh, that bag has been increased from 12 birds to uh, 15 birds. So uh, I don't know if you can hunt in the morning in the first phase. I know you can the second and third uh, phases. Uh, that was always fascinating to me. Uh, when I worked with FWC as to why we didn't open it in the first phase. And then I was told, I don't know, you may have I heard it, this. I, I thought it was federal. No, I, I was told that we had the option of opening it in the first phase, but we didn't want to roll people out of bed who were trying to sleep late. And so we decided in the first phase not to open it in the morning. And I said, well, that's a rotten reason not to open it. You know, people can get up at daylight if they want to. But anyway, I reckon they didn't want to have hunters uh, uh, roll them out of bed. So anyway, um, the uh, and Ken also the commission uh, took action. I don't know whether you heard, but to, they decided not to allow a bear season this year, and uh, that uh, came out of the most recent commission meeting. Uh, I was disappointed, to be quite honestly, quite honestly, as a member of the public, I thought that uh, the agency would approve a bear season. They, for some reason, chose not to, and uh, I'm sure it's got to do with 
politics, if you want to get right down to it. Not but, surprised. Yeah, yeah, I know. But uh, when they last had a bear season, I think they had a seven-day season, if I'm not mistaken, and they fill their quota in one day, uh, which was uh, over uh, over 300 bears. So for whatever reason, they chose not to have it uh, this coming year, but have pledged. They actually are writing a new bear management plan, as I understand it, and I've asked some of the staff about it, and they don't want to go into any detail right now about it. But apparently they're going to uh, prepare a new bear management plan and then the commissioners uh, are going to address this at some point in the future and then we'll see what happens. So, And if you uh, get problems with bears, let me just say this, always call FWC and uh, let them know you got a bear hanging around your garbage can or that, that sort of thing. Uh, Ken, I think we're up against a break, so let's take a break now and uh, we will be back with you in a moment. Well, welcome back to our last segment. Uh, Ken, we were talking about just some general hunting things. Um, one of the things that's happened this year is uh, if, you're a, if you're a deer hunter, doesn't matter if you're a bow hunter, a muzzleloader, or a a modern gun hunter, how you go after deer in Florida now, and I'm not talking about any other state other than Florida, there apparently are some new rules that uh, I understand are coming down the pike and they're here for this season. First ever. That's in, correct. In the history of the state That's of Florida. Um, we have never had to report a deer harvest um, through my lifetime. Right. And. Um, this year, of course, other states have had it. Georgia has had it for a number of years, and I believe Alabama does it now. But Florida's gone to a reporting system, and it's new this year, and it's got... Uh, they got two, is there two ways, am I correct? There's two ways, a written log uh, in conjunction with a phone call. In other words, you harvest a deer, you have to call a number, and then you have to log on a written log or you have to have... And it's very basic info, correct? Yeah, number of points, uh, the county of harvest, um, and, but you have to have, if you do the written, according to what I read, you have, at, they'll, when you call, they give you a confirmation right. number. So that confirmation number has to go on your written log if, right. if you choose to do it that way. Um, the other option is a, a deer harvest uh, app on your phone that you have to download and then there's a whole set of instructions on how you do it off of your app. Well, I wonder that app, I assume it has to work off the internet and so if you're out in the woods. It goes in your, uh, it goes in a folder after you, you go ahead and do it and then once you get to where there's signal, it's, it'll send it. It'll send it. So it's, it's, and then you get it's, notified. it's logged as you have reported it even though it may not have been sent, my understanding. Right. So, um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of uh, quirks and, sure. and, and information Certainly. that that needs to be out. But my, and my other understanding is the deer has to be reported before it's removed from the harvest site. So, if if my information is correct, um, you need to get on the telephone or get on your app as soon as you harvest the deer before it's removed. Well, I was <clears throat> reading you have 24 hours. To, to report it, re but I guess you take and you write down the critical info on the paperwork, and I'm sure... Yes, yes. Prior to moving a harvested deer, hunters must log their harvest. So okay. if you're on the ground and you don't call in, you fill out this on your your deal here, and then you have 24 to, to call it in. Right. But there has to be a record, one or the other, before that deer is removed. Yes, that's correct. Um, right. And I know there's a, I talked to somebody yesterday and uh, they were just about to wring their hands and I said, listen, <laughs> just chill out. Everybody's in the same boat right now. Yep. Uh, nobody knows how exactly uh, if there are quirks in the system, but I said they'll work them out. And I suspect, I don't know this, I suspect you're going to see this for turkeys down the road. It would not surprise me at all that if uh, in the future, if you bag a, a, a wild turkey during a spring season, that you you probably are, we're as a state going to have to go to some. So a lot of states do it differently. So for those who aren't app savvy, 
That's right. And I, I don't, I'm going to have to get my wife to even put the thing on the phone for me or one of my kids. Well, believe but if, me, I'm if you're right not, there with you. If you're not now, when you go to the woods, you're going to need this, this application and don't forget to bring a pen. And you're going to need a pen, this piece of paper in your pocket, and I'm not making fun of No, nope. it's just it's the just, way it is. I know, but you're going to need to record that <laughs> before you move the animal, and then yep. and then uh, you got to 24 hours to report it. So anyway, and that's... Uh, but you know, if you look back on I mean, everything FWC's done, and GFC's done in, in, our, in our history, eventually it will become second nature. Right. It's it's all new. Everybody resists change. It's got its good points, I'm sure, about keeping up with sure. you know sure. harvest sure. data. But eventually, I think it'll become second nature, and we won't be fussing about it anymore. Yeah, I know. And we're not fussing about it. We're just that's just the point of uh, interest. There are people fussing about it. Oh, I know. I know. Believe me, I've, <laughs> I, I I'm not out there every day to hear it, but I'm sure there are a lot of people that are probably are not happy about it well so. it's a new it's a new monster and until we get used to the monster and what to do uh, the first thing everybody's going to forget is okay i just shot the deer i ran over there to him and i start dragging it's oops yeah, I, I gotta stop, stop. <laughs> and fill out my form <laughs> yeah. or go to my phone and get on my app well so. the good thing is is uh, weight's not required so uh you no. know you don't have to right. you know you don't have to go and put a uh you know a uh uh, 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 device on a tree and try to hang your deer. You don't have to do any of that. Right. And there, and it, and it's five deer, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a total of uh, two antlers deer. If the person's, yeah. if it's either during the antlers season or uh, a person's got antlers permits, so you're allowed a total of five deer for the season under this new uh, system that the agency's going to. Uh, before we go, let me mention this. I don't know if you people remember, but. 18 years ago yesterday, we had one of the worst acts that's been committed in this country since uh, World War II, and that was the uh, bombing of the Twin Towers in New York City. So stop today, uh, say a, a prayer for all of those that helped respond to that, uh, and be thankful for the military people that uh, keep us safe and secure. Uh, that was 18 years ago yesterday. So Ken, thank you for being Amen. on. And uh, we will uh, see you next week. Next time. Next time. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.